Geek Vibes Live is rated G for Geek. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to another fantastic episode of our Geek Vibe Geek Vibes Live interview segment. I'm your host, Kelly Cantoris, and we have an exciting guest with us today, Jesse Camacho. He plays Doug Brazell um, in the Netflix original series, Lock and Key. I believe we are waiting for him to dial in right now. Um, so while we wait, Tia, are you there? I am here, so we're going to wait for Jesse to kind of hop in, but this is Kelly's show, obviously, and Kelly, you, um, I believe, were telling me for a while that I should check out Lock and Key, which I unfortunately haven't just yet. (laughs) Yeah, I think there's something, when I was watching it, there was this whimsical aspect to it that, I don't know, just drew me in, and it, like, appealed to, like, my inner kid and my inner fantasy, like the idea of having keys that could unlock doors and take you to all different places around the world or whatever. I just thought that was so neat. Yeah. And obviously I think that Netflix does a really good job with its fantasy worlds and especially its, um, its series. At any time a series comes out, it seems like it's always successful and always garners this bit of a um, of a gathering of fans who are into it. So I know that when this first came out, everyone was kind of talking about it online. And, you know, we're all self-quarantined, so there isn't really any excuse to give you to say why I haven't checked it out yet. Yeah, especially because you've been asking about (laughs) what shows to watch. You're blowing through so many shows. Exactly. But, Kelly, so just let you know I'm going to put him in right now, and I'm going to put myself on mute, so I'm going to put him in just now, okay? Okay. And here's uh, here's Jesse, guys. (laughs) Hey, Jesse, how are you? Very good, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Thanks for joining us. We're so happy to have you here. Um, Just for our audience who might not be familiar with Lock and Key, just want to give a little background. The series is about three siblings who, following their father's murder, move into their ancestral home, which is filled with all these supernatural reality-bending keys, um, many of which um, I wish I had. I was just talking to my colleague, Jesse, saying how I wish I had these keys, like it appealed to my inner, my inner child. So um, how was it filming season one? Like, tell me about your experience. Honestly, it was definitely the, the, the highlight of my career. I'm, I was such a big fan, just first and foremost of the creators of, of Meredith Avril and Carlton Q. So that was super exciting. And then just getting to work, especially with the Savini squad, which is the group for those who have seen the show that I'm really with for most of the season we just really got along and there was like this great chemistry amongst us. It was like going to an amusement park every day to shoot. It was literally just a joy. And then getting to meet everyone else, you know, uh, by extension being on set and everything, it just became like a family. It was honestly, you know, one of the major highlights of my career so far. That's amazing. When you get to form relationships like that, do you guys still keep in touch and see each other? Oh, absolutely. We've got uh, WhatsApp, you know, a big WhatsApp chat, and uh, we we, we yep. FaceTime all the time. I just spoke to uh, Patrice Jones, who plays Scott, the other day. Uh, and uh, Halia Jones and I, Halia plays Eden Hawkins on the show, are actually surprisingly very close because in the show we kind of hate each other. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I keep in regular contact with basically everyone, and uh, it's like that with everybody. We just all really got along, and that's a really lucky thing in this kind of big group dynamic. It is. It's very lucky. And, um, you know, that probably helped a lot of the chemistry that came across on the screen as well, because you had just had those natural bonds in place. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it was we were just fortunate that way. We just all kind of clicked. I mean, the, it worked really well with the entire Locke family. They had a crazy chemistry that just worked. Uh, Sherry and Kobe uh, got along really well as, you know, mother and son. And, yeah, and the Savini squad and all the friends just really 
you know, developed a shorthand really fast, and it was just a pleasure. Oh, that is great. Um, well, I want to shed some more background on you for our viewers. So you starred in um, the HBO series Less Than Kind, um, and it was based on writer and executive producer Marvin Key's uh, life. So I know you won an award for that show. What did that feel like, getting that kind of recognition? Well, you know, uh, we were talking about Lock and Key before, but less than kind, I would say, you know, looking back on everything that I've been fortunate enough to do was really the experience that defined me the most as an actor and a person. You know, I really did grow up on that show, uh, and that was great. Yeah, I won a, a Montreal Actor Award for that, which was really, really cool because that is my, my hometown up here in Canada. So getting that recognition was, you know, amazing, especially because on that show I was surrounded by such an amazing ensemble cast in this in this kind of wacky comedy and I was very much the straight man so you know it was my job as I always said to kind of set up the jokes for everyone else so <laughs> getting uh, that recognition was amazing and you know getting to tell that story based on Marvin's life was so much fun I got to work with uh, amazing people I mean that's still you know when I look back uh, on the career I've been fortunate enough to have that's really the thing that sticks out is what kind of defined me so yeah that was uh, definitely a, a really great highlight to get to you know, accept that award in my hometown with all my friends and peers and family. Yeah, that's amazing. And and how do you think your experience or time on that show helped you in your role with Lock and Key? That's a great question. Basically, like, you know, what was cool about Less Than Kind was while my character was sort of the the central person on that show, it was very much a family thing. It was very much an ensemble, and it was, taught me a lot about, you know, teamwork. And I think that's a really kind of environment where I thrive. I love working with others, and I love, you know, kind of passing the ball. And so on Lock and Key, coming in as more kind of uh, like a peripheral presence on the show, I was really lucky that all the leads really embraced me and, and took us in. They treated us all super equally. So that experience of getting to work in that group dynamic, you, you kind of just develop uh, a shorthand in that you can kind of come in and go, okay, I know w what role I play here. You know, it's a bit, at first at Walking Key, I was like, just stay out of the way, don't slow anyone down. But then once everyone just kind of really warmed, warmly embraced me, you really felt the, the freedom to kind of uh, express yourself creatively, and that's something that I really did learn on Less Than Kind with that group. Um, so I, I, I think every experience really teaches you moving forward, but Less Than Kind especially taught me about, you know, how to work in this group dynamic and be able to, when the right time to contribute is and when the right time to you know, stay out of the way. is So uh, that was really beneficial to me. Awesome. So thinking about the group dynamic uh, actually just reminded me, so a lot of kids don't follow in their parents' footsteps, but for you, you got to be born into an amazing family with two well-known Canadian actors. What was it like growing up in that environment? Did you know from a young age you wanted to be in acting? Yeah, basically I, I came out of the womb kind of wanting to get into it. And my parents at first uh, were very much, uh, you know, like, are you sure there's a lot of rejection? You know, uh, they definitely weren't, you know, the, the kind of stereotypical stage parents. But once I was pretty like, no, nope, this is what I want to do, I was begging from the age of like three. And then when I was eight, they were like, all right, we can slowly try to make this work. And then, you know, they've been the most amazing supportive people. I'm very fortunate uh, to have them. And growing up, kind of, you know, getting getting a bit about the inner workings of the industry and what to expect. And, you know, I, I went to visit my mom and dad on set all the time. And now my sister's an actress as well. She's just getting into it. So, yeah, we have a very, very entertaining dinner table conversations. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they, they've, been, they've been amazing uh, in showing me the ropes. I'm sure you have great stories to swap with each other. Um, I think, did you get an opportunity to act with your father before? Yes, actually. We um, we did a, a Netflix film together about a year and a half ago called uh, Good Sam, uh, and I was uh, I was in that, and my dad, actually, my dad, Mark Camacho, his name is, he played my boss, uh, so we got to do a couple scenes together, and that was really a joy, and of course, when I was in, you know, um, Sejep, which is the, you know, Quebec version of college, essentially, I was in a, <laughs> a film program, and my poor parents, I cast them in every single thing, so professionally like uh, outside of things that I've written I've worked with my dad once but with uh, you know fun school projects I've had both my parents and my stuff a bunch of times <laughs> that's great do you want to work with them again in a professional capacity do you feel like you guys like feed off each other well when you're on camera 
Oh yeah, absolutely. It's 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 so much fun. Like uh, getting to improvise with my mom or my dad, and like even when obviously when it's other people scripted stuff, obviously there's there's just kind of natural chemistry and shorthand there. And uh, you know the the tricky thing with my dad is we look a lot alike. So I remember it was a brief concern on Good Sam. They're like, oh God, should we make him his uncle? Should we acknowledge that they look so much alike? Um, but uh, yeah, I think we all kind of really. Uh, pop on camera together because there's just yeah there's ex- excitement and natural chemistry so yeah of course any any day of the week that's that's great and and going on to the opposite side of the spectrum so that that's your your easy seamless way of working because you have that natural chemistry what on lock and key was one of the more challenging scenes for you to shoot well i mean it was all super, super fun. I, I would say from, uh, I guess, a technical standpoint, all the stuff that we did in Episode 6 in the, in the caves, the obviously the interior of the caves were studio and the exterior were on location in Lunenburg, Nova Scotia. But that was just kind of a really tricky thing because it was a flooding set and, you know, uh, what, all the resets were complicated. We'd have to get dried off and changed. But in terms of, like, challenging for us, it was actually a blast. We had so much fun. I would say in terms of, like, us... As performers, it was probably the first couple of days, and it wasn't challenging in the terms uh, in terms of it was hard. It was just sort of we kind of just jumped right in. We we're supposed to be playing, you know, people that have known each other for, in the case of Patrice, Asha, and I, many many years, and we're supposed to have this great shorthand and this really fun group dynamic. And you know, I wasn't available for the rehearsal, so my first day acting with them was my first day on set. So. Luckily, uh, I had met Patrice and Ash is incredibly easy to get along with, and Amelia Jones is a star. So within the first couple of takes, we're like, okay, we got this. But that going into that, that was the thing I was most scared of. But it just came together super easily. That's great. And um, I'm so excited to hear that uh, Lock and Key is renewed for season two. Have you heard any details that you could share with us? Uh, that is, yeah, I was I was super excited to hear, too. We didn't hear before anybody else, which was uh, really cool. Well, um, I did know when I went down to the premiere in Los Angeles, they were speaking about if there would be a season two. We weren't sure at that point. I think that the original plan, and please don't get mad at me if this is not true, Meredith and Carlton, <laughs> but I believe uh, that it was supposed to be around May or June. That was the plan, but obviously because of everything that's going on, they want to be uh, super safe, which we all appreciate. So I think um, they're tentatively thinking late summer, but again, that's there's very much, uh, very much above my pay grade. Uh, but in terms of what's going to happen, no, like uh, I, they, they welcomed me into the writers' room, which was nice while I was down there. But they told me nothing. It was really funny. It was a funny visit. I was trying to gas them. <laughs> they would not give me anything. But it seems like there's going to be some more Savini squad shenanigans. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Well, that is exciting. And and as an actor, when you're approaching something like that, like what does it feel like to get a new script um, or a new episode and, and reading your character's, um, you know, role in that episode without knowing what's going to happen next? Is that like just as exciting as, you know, watching the show in real time? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's It was actually very funny because obviously Lock and Key is based on, uh, these great graphic novels by Joe Hill and the Savini squad, including my character, are not in the graphic novels. So I didn't even get, you know, any kind of idea of where it can go, which was what's so exciting about it. So I'm really reading it as a fan. And when I first got cast, you know, I, I didn't know in terms of how long the character was going to be around, if he was going to even survive. Spoiler alert, he's still going strong for now. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, reading those scripts is super exciting because I'm literally reading them as a fan. So it's it, it's just it is just like watching it uh, for the uh, for, as the audience for the first time. You know, I get a script and I'm just feverishly turning the pages, and I'm relieved when I live till the end of the episode, and I'm also like nervous <laughs> for everyone else. So yeah, it's a super exciting thing. It's like getting a brand new book that you're a huge fan of. Right, that's so exciting. It's like a page turner you can't put down. Exactly, exactly. And these guys are the gold standard, I think, in terms of writers. So. It really is super well-written and super exciting. Awesome. So I think one thing our listeners would love to know is what's the dream project you would want to work on or maybe like an actor or an actress that you've always wanted to work with? Uh, Yeah, well, uh, I've always been very partial to, 
you know, I don't know what it is to people like, I mean, one of them is super obvious. You know, you think of the greats like Meryl Streep, that's someone I would obviously die to work with. But even sort of the, the new, they're not, they're not up-and-comers anymore, I'm not suggesting that, but people like Saoirse Ronan and, and uh, Jennifer Lawrence have been people that I've really, really admired, or the new guys like Timothy Chalamet. I, I really kind of love those guys who are bringing something new and fresh. You know, I loved, uh, I loved the films last year, so that's all really great. In terms of Dream Project, I mean, this is pretty close. Uh, you know, growing up, Lost, the show Lost was my religion in high school, and that's... Uh, uh, I love that and, show. I'm with yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was so obsessed. And, you know, Stranger Things is one that I've really, really, really enjoyed. Uh, so Lock and Key kind of fits really well within that, that world. So this is pretty much pretty much it. It's a bit of a, you know, it, it feels like a brown noser answer, but it's just the truth. Like, it really is the, the thing that I'd love to be involved in. But I also really like... Um, uh, nice character shows, you know, shows that have a unique perspective. You know, Master of None was uh, was a show like that, um, and I, I enjoy those as well. But in terms of like the, the the kind of the nerd in me, which is a large portion of me, something like Stranger Things or Harry Potter or Lost you know, and Lock and Key is is very much that. You literally just listed all my favorite things, um, so I amazing totally understand. I'm with you. The nerd in me loves all of those things too. Um, so do you have any new projects coming up that you want to talk about? Uh, I did a fun web series uh, I, uh, a little while ago that looks like it's finally going to see the light of day soon called uh, Night Owl, which is super fun. I'm very much looking forward to that getting out there. Other than that, you know, it's uh, excited for season two to start going, and obviously the world's on pause right now, which is as it should be. Everyone should uh, do their part and stay safe and uh, yeah, I'm just very much looking forward to getting back out there. And if you're stuck at home, you know, Lock and Key is a, a good thing to catch up on if you haven't seen it. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And uh, just feeding off of that for a second, you know, with social distancing and the self-isolation and everyone's transition really into, you know, being inside, how has that been for you? I mean, what are you doing in your free time to just help make it a little bit better and not so psychologically draining? Uh, yeah, well, it's you know it, it's not always easy. Obviously, I'm someone who uh, has a bit of anxiety, so this has not been uh, totally ideal. But I've actually been managing super well. I, I go out every day for uh, a nice long walk. I, I'm very careful, obviously, wearing all the gear that I'm supposed to wear. And then, you know, just been doing a lot of reading and trying to do some writing and uh, getting into yoga, which you know, if anyone has seen me on screen, uh, is very much a funny sight. Um, <laughs> And yeah, just trying. Uh, luckily, I you know just when all this happened, I was in Montreal with my parents, so I kind of just like, well, I'll just kind of stay here uh, until things blow over. So I've got company, which is nice. Yeah, just you know, get into a new show, read a book, and then go, go for a walk. You know, just be responsible. You know, maybe you can't go to a friend's house and hang out, but you can go outside and get some fresh air and get that exercise. And I think that makes all the difference. Right. I, I think exercise is really important too, and. Um, I think you should film some of your yoga stuff and share it with the world. Cause I think we would love to see that. I might just take you up on that. That I, I'm, I, you know, somebody somebody will enjoy it because uh, I'm I'm still learning the ropes. So maybe that's the best time to put that footage out there. Um, so it was fantastic speaking with you, Jesse. I feel like you are literally the male version of me um like everything you said is something i would say and we have a lot of things in common um which i wasn't expecting so that's great um is there anything you want to talk about or say to our viewers before i let you off the hook i you know i think just what uh, everyone else is saying i i I appreciate everyone that's uh that's 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 uh, liked the show and and watched it and for those that haven't it's it's a great time to do it and Everyone, uh, stay safe, and uh, we can we can beat this thing and, and get back to it. This too shall pass. And uh, yeah, no, and I totally agree with you. It sounds like uh, we love a lot of the same stuff, which is uh, which is awesome. <laughs> Nerd culture, all the way. Exactly. Um, so thanks everybody for listening. Um, you know, like Jesse said, if you haven't caught the first season of Lock and Key, now's the perfect time to binge watch it. It's such a bingeable show. Um, and we'll keep you posted on season two updates as they arise. Um, again, this is Kelly, your host, and I just want to thank everyone for tuning in and thank Jesse for his time. Thank you. Thank you.